Hello, and welcome to the Dutch Revit Standards BIM Interoperability Tools Model Checker. Here, we're going to be going over how to load up the model checker for Dutch standards in Revit, how to just set it up, how to run, and view that report. First, when you're ready to run the model checker, come up here to BIM Interoperability Tools. Next, come over here to Model Checker. You'll see that you can set up, run, view your report. If you have any options or any questions for help, there it is. And then you can also go to About. When you're ready, go ahead and click on Setup. Inside Setup, if you have a no current check set open, it will actually open you to this page. Here, you can load up any recent check sets that you've added in. Also, you can go to the public library. Here you'll find things like Revit 2020 best practices, FM systems model preparation, Dutch Revit standards, even the US Army Corps engineers standards as well. When you want to select the appropriate one, you can click on the Revit standards and go ahead and click on open. When it loads, it will show you here where your Revit standards are and what check set it is. Also the description. Here in this area, list out the different section and the different kinds of checks you have turned on. Each check that is checked on here in this list will be checked for inside your model. So if you don't want to turn on annotation symbols, or if you don't want to turn on filled regions and hatch patterns, you can just check that off. You can also check off the entire group. Here, you'll notice that this is actually labeled by chapter six, 6.1, two, three, so on and so forth. You can find that in the NLRS documentation. Let's talk about chapter 6.1, Naming Conventions. In this check, I'm going to check on loadable families. This will check to determine if there are names of loadable families which are not compliant with positions one through four in the NLRS. So let's open up the NLRS. In this document, you will find different chapters and conventions that the check set is actually checking against. Here in 6.1, it's actually telling you what position 1, 2, 3, and 4 are. It also added in 5, 6, and 7. But please note that the check set currently is only checking 1 through 4. So in this case, it's looking for the national versions of Revit standards, the available code, available Revit category, and placement method. So looking through this, you'll see in general, it tells you the few common rules for naming loadable families. It's also going to be going through loadable families and what each position can be designated as. Here in position one, this can be a combination of country code and Revit standard. For the Dutch Revit standard, it's NLRS. So for a loadable family, it will start out with NLRS. Moving on, if you look at position two, this is the classification code. You can find these classification codes in the naming convention Excel spreadsheet. Next in position three, this is the abbreviation for the family category. Same idea, you will find this in the naming con component Excel spreadsheet. Here are just a few examples. And then finally, the placement method of a family. Examples are UN and WB. UN meaning unhosted and WB mean wall-based. So now that we know what it's looking for when it comes to the naming convention, let's talk about the check set in itself. Here again, it's looking for components, position one through four, just to make sure that all your loadable families are compliant with 6.1.2 of the NL 
RS. Here, if I'm happy with how I have checked all these different check sets on, I can go ahead and save. You can close this setup and now you're ready to run it. But before we begin, let's talk a little bit about what I'm expecting in terms of a result inside Revit. If I click on my component here, you'll notice that in the properties, the name of the component is NLRS 50 pipe fitting UN and PVC what the name of the actual fitting is. So this follows the naming convention. So if that is true, then when I run my check, I should not expect this to become to be in the list of the components that do not match my standards. So coming up here, I'm going to run this. When I click on run, I can either add models, remove all models, check all links or unchecked all links here. I'm happy with what I am looking at in terms of what Revit I'm going to be checking against and I'm going to run report. Now this might take a little bit, maybe a few uh, extra seconds, but as soon as it's done, you're going to get this model report. Now here you can actually copy this and put it into an email or some other, uh, uh, some other documentation. You can also open up an HTML and save it as you can also save this as an Excel spreadsheet. Now, if you have this model checker, open this results page, you can always just close it. But if you ever need to get back to the report, you could just come right up here to review report and it will open up the last report that was generated. I'm going to expand this so that we can actually see what's going on. I'm going to open up chapter six naming conventions. And I'm going to open up naming convention families. Here you'll notice that under the loadable families, it tells me that I have six checks, one that was a pass, three that was a fail, and two that were not run. And that's very true. It gives me a nice breakdown of what I'm looking at with my check sets. Now I'm going to open up the loadable families. You'll notice that right off the bat here, it tells you what my category is, what my family is, the type, the name, and the element ID. Now if I look here, I notice that my NLRS family is not listed. That means the NLRS family that I've added in actually follows the standard that we are checking against. However, a sum, some do not. If I click on this guy and I want to see where this pipe fitting is, I can actually click on the magnifying glass here. So I'm going to do that. and it takes me right to the component. Now that component that I have here does not match the naming convention that is set up in the NLRS. So what happens if I was to take these fittings and all of a sudden change this? Well, let me come over here to Project Browser. I can actually rename this if I want to, and I'm going to remove the RS there. I'm just going to keep NL there. So once I do that, I'm going to come right up here and run it again. I'm going to say run report. Now this will generate a brand new report. I'm going to expand naming conventions, expand loadable families. And if I look, I will see now the NL pipe fitting here. It does not follow standard. So it becomes listed here in my model checker report. Now, when you're happy here, you can of course save this as an HTML and save this as, as an Excel spreadsheet. Something to know about the HTML and Excel spreadsheets is that they are a snapshot in time, which means that when you save this, they do not get updated until you save over your last spreadsheet or HTML document. Okay, thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.